hello friends welcome to today's video so today we will be continuing our series on the electronic devices so this is a third video on this topic and this is the final video so in the previous video we have seen the formation of pn and diode and then we studied how these diodes are useful under the forward bias as well as under the reverse bias where zener diode is a special case of was the special case of the pn and diode and was used as a voltage regulator so all these previous devices were using the voltage they were excited by the voltage i mean when the external voltage are applied then these were conducting and they were used but now we are moving ahead to another category of semiconductor devices which are opto electronic junction devices so these devices are in in these devices the carriers that is electrons and holes are generated by the photons and this process is known as a photo excitation so starting with the first diode which is a photo diode you know photo diode is a special category of diode which is used to detect the optical signal optical signal is nothing but the light so how this formation of the diode is you know as i said this is a special purpose pn junction diode fabricated with a transparent window to allow light to fall on the diode so this diode is there this pn junction diode is there so in between here a transparent window will be there so in this window when the light falls on this window so it is falling on the junction when the light is falling on the junction some of the charge carriers are being produced and the current will be experienced in the load so the current flow is because of this photons that are falling on this junction so that is why these are called as opt so that is why these are called as opto electronic junction devices so initially what happens is these are operate under the reverse bias so external voltage is applied but then this voltage will just create this junction and then charge carriers will be there but only upon the falling of the light this charge carriers will start flowing through the load and the current will be generated so the magnitude of the current will depend on the intensity of the incident light magnitude of the photo current depends on the intensity of the incident light and the current is proportional to the incident light intensity since so this is one important application is we can detect the presence of light using these photodiodes and the category of opto electron device is a light emitting diode we might have heard every day in our we will call led lights during festivals and and many times we will be decorating on our homes with led lights so what these lights are these are also heavy doped junction pn junction diode and normally these are operated under forward bias so when the forward bias is applied then what happens is this at the junction the light will emit so the diodes are manufactured such that when the voltage is given the light is generated so that is how they are manufactured so in this case like the photo diode there will be a transparent window and through this window light will be emitting out so the diode is encapsulated with a transparent cover so that emitted light can come out this is important so the forward current of the diode is small the intensity of the light emitted is small so depending on the current that is flowing in the diode the light intensity will vary so depending on the current the color of the diode the light of the the color of the light that is emitted will vary so the threshold voltage as i have said in between the threshold voltage will be this because of the depletion region so the threshold voltages are higher and they vary each with a different color so this manufacture this manufacturing of this pn junction diode for led will depend on the color which they will emit and depending on the colors the doping will be varying some of the advantages of led diodes are you know over the conventional lights is the operational voltage are very less and they consume very less power fast action and no warm up time required means immediately once you switch on the led will start to glow the bandwidth of the light is this one and it is monochromatic long life fast switch on switch off capability so these are some of the advantages of the led diodes so moving to other type of diodes which is a photo 
voltaic device is this converts optical radiation into electricity this is another category of the special junction special pn junction diodes so you know these solar cells are basically a pn junction which generates the emf when solar radiation falls on the pn junction so here solar radiation used the solar radiation falls what happens small emf emf is a small voltage which will be generated so this actually works on a similar principle like photovoltaic effect as a diode except that there no external bias is applied you know in the previously we have seen in this photodiode external bias external voltage was given whereas in the case of the photovoltaic there is no external connection that is given so that is an important difference we have to note and the junction area that is the this junction area of the pn diode is kept much larger for the solar radiation to be incident so solar radiation will fall on this junction diode and this area is more than compared to the normal diode so the generation of the emf how it happens is by solar cell when light falls on it it is because of the generation and then the separation and the collection so these are different processes that are happening in the carriers we know that electrons and holes are there so these carriers will be a detail then how the generation how this separate and how the collection will happen that is a very complicated topic we will not go much into that so what happens in the solar when the light is falling the p side becomes positive and side becomes negative giving rise to the photo voltage so that is how it works so how the solar cells are used to power the electronic devices in satellites so this is an important application the solar cells are used to use the satellites and in the satellite electronic devices are being powered by solar cells since in satellite sun will be there and the sunlight will be falling so these are important source of energy so that is why solar cells are used in satellites so this is the basic construction of the pn junction solar cell next is moving with the next topic which is the digital electronics and logical gates you know normally you might have heard about amplifiers analog amplifiers so normally any signal which is continuous is comes under the category of analog signal whereas digital signal in, in, is one in which there are only two or two very two levels are varying and they are continuously changing so this is a simple of this is a diagram of a digital signal like 0 and 1 so it will varying between those two those two so these are known as the digital signals so next you know these digital signals are generated using logic gates and the logic gates can be operated using these signals we'll see how they are You know, logic gates are used in calculators, digital water, computers, industrial control systems, and telecommunication. So basically, a logic gate is nothing but a switch. Like when you give an input, the output will determine. Based on the input condition and the type of the gate, output will determine. So either the switch will be on or the switch will be off. So these gates are basically five types, which are basic gates. You know. They are the one of the most basic gate is the inverter, which is the NOT gate. This is the most basic gate. You know, this is the most basic gate with one input and one output. So the logic, so the diagram of this is it is represented using a triangle symbol followed by a small circle. What happens is when you give a zero signal, then the output will be one. Let's say if your waveform is like this, zero volt and five volt. During the zero volt, your output will be five volt. And when you give five volt, the input will be zero. so this is how the this is the input signal and this is the output signal this is how it works so it is inverting the output so that is why it is known as the inverter it is one of the most fundamental and important logic gates moving to the next gate which is an or gate so or gate is represented using this symbol where two inputs are there one output is there this is the how the input and output behaves there are two inputs a and b when you give both zero and zero output will be zero zero one one so when either of the input is one the output will be one 
So this is the functioning of the OR gate. Similarly, we have one more basic gate which is the AND gate. So it is represented by using AND, like a D and two inputs and one output. So in this when both the inputs are one, only then the output is one. Even if one of them is zero, the output is zero. This is also one of the important basic gates. We just remember the logical, the input output characteristics and the, how it is represented. That is sufficient. Next is, till now we have discussed the basic gates which, are, which were NOT gate, AND gate and OR gate. Now we will be moving ahead to universal gates. There are two gates which, is, which are NAND and NOR gate. So we will see how, what are universal gates. So these are the basic gates. Now these NAND and NOR are universal gates. Why these are called universal is because using these two gates we can generate any of these. So that is why they are called as universal gates. So how these behave is, so the how they are represented are like this. It is followed by NAND. NAND means AND and a NOT. AND and followed by a NOT. So this is the how they are represented. Next, in shortcut they are shown like this, an AND gate. A, B and C. So logical diagram you can derive. So when A and B both are 0, Y is 1. Only when both are 1, 1 then output is 0. It's exactly opposite to the how the AND gate functions. So this is the input output behavior of the NAND gate. Similarly for an OR gate, an OR gate is shown using an OR gate followed by an inverter. So this is the NOR gate representation. This is the input output table. In this even if one of them is 1, input is 1, the output is 0. Only when both the zeros are it is 1. It is basically exactly opposite to the OR function. That is why it is also called as a NOR gate. It is also a universal gate. 